How's it going guys? Um, today I'm going to make a quick video for you on how to get started with tuning your LT1 car. This will be the first video in a, in a series on um, you know tips and tricks for tuning your LT car and it mainly pertains to 94 and 95 LT1s with the 051 computer which is pretty much everything but the Corvette. If you do have an OBD2 car you can convert it back to OBD1 to um, use all of the same software and this, you know, the same computer and, and same stuff that I'm talking about here. So let's get started. There's three things that you're going to need. Um, the first is a laptop with a USB port and a decent battery life. The second is an ALDL cable. I highly recommend buying one through Moats, and that's spelled M-O-A-T-E-S. I've had other cables before through, um, you know, some sources on eBay and uh, another one. It's called ALDL cable. They all failed on me, and uh, the Moats has been going strong for years. Um, do not cheap out on an ALDL cable because if you have a connection issue, you will end up bricking your PCM, and it'll cost you money. So, don't cheap out. Spend the extra twenty dollars and buy the Moats. The third thing you're going to need is some freeware. So basically, what I use are um, these two programs over here. I have Cat's Wind Flash. And this essentially is a uh, just a flashing utility. It's used for pulling tunes and writing tunes onto the computer, you know, doing basic stuff like changing your VIN, um, getting vehicle info. And then the other guy is Tuner Pro RT, and this is basically the uh, the meat and potatoes of tuning an LT1. So this is where you're going to modify all these parameters and uh, and tinker and and actually play with the tune file itself whereas wind flash which I'll open up now is basically just for ripping it and writing it so when you first start up wind flash you're gonna see it's a 30-day trial um, what's great about this program is it's it's so old that you can just uninstall it and reinstall it and you'll get another 30 days so download the setup file and just keep it somewhere in the event you know after 30 days you can just uninstall and reinstall it, and you have it for another month um, also, when you're installing both of these programs, try to do it in compatibility mode for Windows XP or Windows ME or you know something something older. Um, when you use Windows 10 or like Windows 8, it gets a little finicky. All right, so you have your ALDL cable plugged into your laptop, and uh, you're in your car. The ALDL cable is is plugged into your car as well into the OBD port, and um, take your key turn it on standby and count to 15 you always want to do that um, if you try to uh, try to do anything before that time is up you can end up bricking your computer so it's like a little security thing just wait 15 seconds once you've done that come in here click setup go into com port um, you'll be able to select which USB port your ALDL cable is plugged into typically on my laptop it's uh, port 3 or port 4 but I'm up at my desktop right now, and, um, you know, there's nothing there. This, I believe, is my headset that I'm talking through right now. So just, you know, make sure whatever that is, there's nothing else USB plugged into there. And uh, you have your ALDL cable selected. And then once you've done that, go and click on Vehicle Information under Tools. Uh, click OK. And then you'll get a little dialog. And this is just like a quick read of what's going on. Um, when this dialog pops up, it'll populate and it'll give you a bunch of information about the car you're trying to tune, or you know, it'll it'll read off the VIN number and tell you a lot of info. Um, because I'm not plugged into my car right now, it's not going to tell me anything useful. See, it says unable to access vehicle info. Well, typically it would say you know country of origin, let's say USA, uh, General Motors. It'll it'll give you all the info on the type of car that you're trying to tune. If it doesn't, that means you have some sort of connection issue, um, issue with your cable, issue with your laptop, whatever it might be. So double check that before you move on. If it does populate, you're ready to go to the next step. And um, that's when you want to come in here, go back into tools, click read, not program, sorry. And uh, this is what you're going to do to pull the tune off the car itself. So. Say I was working on a stock 94 Roadmaster, I would just type, you know, whatever I want to call it, 94 Roadmaster stock, or like baseline. Once you've done that, 
click save and then it'll start you'll um, a dialogue will come up and uh, it'll cycle the fans on for your car the electric fans and then uh, it'll start to pull the tune it'll go from zero to 100 percent and when it's done it'll tell you it was successful you'll click OK and then you'll have the tune file loaded on your computer and you can manipulate it and do whatever you want with it um, be very very careful when you're programming or you're reading with this program if you have your computer set up to go into, into hibernation or go into standby after a certain amount of time or like if you have a screensaver or if it'll if it'll kick you out log you off that's going to screw it up if you interrupt this program at all while it's working you will end up breaking your computer so you have to be extremely extremely careful make sure not to interrupt it don't exit out if you do that you'll screw it up so you know ask me how i know um, you'll essentially do the same thing once you're done manipulating the tune. Once you saved your new bin file from your stock one, your new tuned one, you'll just go, you'll click program, you'll select whatever file you've mani manipulated and you'll load it back in and, you know, be very careful with the program and it, if all goes well, it'll complete and you won't have any issues. So, all right. So once you've pulled the tune off and you've saved it somewhere, it's time to go into Tuner Pro RT. Um, I have an unregistered copy of Tuner Pro RT. Um, if you pay $39, this little dialog goes away and you don't have to wait 10 seconds to get into the program. But I don't know. Is it worth 40 bucks to you? You can ask yourself that. All right, so now you're in here. Um, if it's your first time, you won't have what's called an XDF. So you see this little tab up top go into here um an xdf is essentially it's it's a definition file think of it as like a translator it's um when you pull the the bin file the tune file it's called a bin when you pull it off of your car it's just going to be a string of data so tuner pro doesn't know how to interpret that so what you're going to have to do is go on a tuner pro's website tunerpro.com you'll see over here under downloads Click on definitions, which I'm already on there. Um, scroll down, general motors, and the one you're going to want is a dollar symbol, and EE is what it's called. That's the one we're going to be using. So come in here, scroll down, found EE right here. You can see it works with the 051 PCM, which is if you're a 94 or 95, that's what you should have. Or if you're OBD1 converted from OBD2, you would be using this as well. So you're going to want to just take it, download it, which I've already downloaded it. Um, you know, open up the folder, save it somewhere. You're not going to forget about it. And then uh, once you have it, come in here, click XDF, select XDF, click on EE. There you go. Now you're you're loaded up, and then you can you can click open and come into wherever you've saved all your tunes and uh, the one you just pulled from your car. You can pop it open. So once you're in here, you have this parameter tree right here. I like to keep everything viewed by the type. It makes it easy to view. And uh, there's three different types of things you can tinker with in this. You have flags, scalers, and tables. So I'm going to describe flags first because they're probably the most easy to grasp. So this is, just think of this as like a, you know, binary. It's on or it's off. So a lot of these things in here, you see at the, uh, the end, like air pump diagnostic, error 29, or error 23, error 97, all these numbers, these are all OBD1 trouble codes. These are service engine soon, check engine light, whatever you want to call it. So say you took your air pump out. So here you go. You would just click on air pump diagnostic, whatever code it's given you. If you've deleted your emissions, come in here. The box will be checked. You would just undo it, hit save. There you go. Your computer can no longer throw an error 29 once you've done that. Um, so for like emissions deletes, this is where you would go to undo a lot of these OBD codes. Like, so you got another other one here. This is for your air pump. Crank air select. This is to completely disable the system. So that that's another thing. Um, not only is this OBD codes, but there's also other features you can turn on or off in here. Like up, up at the top, you see I have you can turn VATS off can turn traction control off. Um, I think this is another security thing. 
Uh, you can turn speed density mode on or off, which is like you're not running a, a math sensor, which you would want to do, say, if you had like a, a turbo car or you know, something of that nature. So there's this is just an on or off kind of thing. So flags are pretty straightforward. The next thing is scalars. So these are all just constants that you would um you would come in, numbers that you can tinker with. So like if you look in here, we have fuel cutoff, first gear, fuel cutoff, second and sixth gear. So here this is these are just red lines essentially. Fuel cutoff, fuel resume. So this is for a uh, a 95 six speed car is what I have up right now. So we have the stock limiter. Um, I don't think the computer really has a way to tell if you're in first or if you're in these other gears. So I think this is actually the true red line, unless I've tinkered with this bin. Um, but yeah, all all you really have in here are all these um these scalars. They're just numbers. You have your fan temps. Um, you know when your EGR comes on, your injector flow rate. So stock injectors, your cylinder volume, this is, you know, milliliters per cylinder. This is for just a regular 350 cubic inch stock LT1. If you were a stroker, you would increase that. I think it's like three or no, it's like seven, 787. Um, but yeah, you know, these are also pretty straightforward. A lot of different things you can tinker with in terms of fueling, um, maximum spark, uh, your fan temps, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. When when it goes into when it comes into closed loop, you know, there's all sorts of little tricks and things you can do here. The last thing I will show you is tables, and what you're looking at right here is this is just a huge timing map. So at the top, you see it's a spark advance, RPM versus map. So up at the top, this is your map sensor. Manifold pressure. So 100 is atmospheric. It's uh well actually you know like 101. Atmospheric pressure, wide open throttle. This is when your foot's all the way down. It's going to be up here, and then right here on this axis is uh you know your RPMs, and then this that's just sort of um that goes up to 4,000. Well here's the extended portion. Both of these guys combined together. This is your entire timing map. There's um, other sorts of modifiers and stuff in other tables that um, tweak this depending on your engine temp and um, other other factors that are going on. But the majority of the time when you're in closed loop and there's nothing goofy going on, this is what your what your computer is commanding. The other thing you also have to think about too is that uh, the LT computer will add timing when you go into wide open throttle. Or it's also called PE mode, power enrichment. So I'll discuss that in another video. But in the tables, what's kind of neat is you can uh, click on the table graph right here. And you get this nice little timing map, and uh, you know if you got if you got a keyboard, let's see if you got a later version of Windows. What's kind of neat is you can uh, use your arrow keys and kind of move around, and use the plus and minus to uh, add or subtract, which is very very helpful for making them look real pretty. But you know, just because it's pretty doesn't mean it actually works. Um, all right, so the next thing I'll show you guys, which is extremely helpful, is this compare feature at the top up in this tab. So you would just click other random bins, say you found online or, uh, you know, made yourself, and you have these things to compare to. So here's one that I found online. And um, what is neat about this is you have in the table... And also for scalars as well, and for flags, there'll be a, a little little box that'll show you what the other bin that you're comparing it to, what it has in there. So like say you click compare, now that it's shaded yellow, it'll show you all the other data from the tune that I'm comparing it to. Like you can see I have this big cat tune loaded up, the medium one. Um, so when you click, you can also view it by table and it'll it'll show you see this is something a different tuner did he does this totally different that's kind of odd you know you don't normally see a timing map like that but um that's what's really neat and there's also the difference tool which will show you you know in degrees it's just a you know pure subtraction how different it is from the other one um when you're done modifying all these things you want to click the little save icon up top it's very important 
or else uh, you'll lose all of it. You can also use that compare feature in flags and scalars as well. So I have that compare bin loaded. And as you can see right here, this little shaded portion is what the bin that I'm comparing it to has. So you can see it's the EGR code is set on the stock bin, but it's not on the big cat tune. Same thing goes for scalars. But um, it's a little different because you can see right at the bottom you have what the Big Cat Tune has, but you have this neat little feature where you can click copy and it'll just take whatever values on the uh, compare bin and stick it right into the bin that you're working on and then you can just save it, which is pretty useful if you're trying to um, copy parts of another tune. What's also pretty neat about um, tables as well is when you drop down, say for like timing, you drop down this little function bar and you have offset. You can multiply it, divide it. There's also copy from compare, which is really useful. So you can just say like grab a few cells, click copy. Now they're all highlighted red. And the red essentially indicates that um, you've changed something. I've never used the smooth. I should probably, probably see what that does. I don't know. But yeah, offset will allow you to use the plus and minus keys on your laptop keyboard, which I I find really useful, especially when I'm when I have uh, the screen split up like this, so I can just roam around with the arrow keys and plus and minus it, which is pretty useful. Smooth it out, make it look good. It's not super important that it looks pretty, but you know. Makes me feel good. But yep, yeah, um, once you're done with that, you know, save your bin. I guess uh, from that point forward, you would want to go through and um, open up WinFlash, flash your computer with your new bin, and you're pretty much good to go. Um, once that's finished, you're going to need a data logging program. And I have one right here. It's called Scan9495. It's probably my favorite one. Um, I really did like Data Master, but you can't get it anymore, unfortunately. So uh, with Scan9495, you'd have the proper COM port selected. You know, 3Connect slash Reset. Click that. And then Scan should pop up, this little guy. This will turn green. You can click on that. Then this whole entire thing will populate. Um, if you have any trouble codes, you can see them in this tab. Uh, you know, trans stuff, faults. What I really like about this program the most, though, is uh, there's this little section called actuators. So you can come in here and you can actually um, trick your car into doing certain things. Like you can turn, you can cycle your fans. Um, super useful if you know you're like sitting in the pit at a track and you want to cool your car down. Um, you know, change your idle. There's all these little, little things. And then you know, if you go tweaking all these and you want it to go back to normal, you just click reset all. But um, yeah, this this guy's pretty easy. After you've clicked the scan button, it starts populating and it'll record down at this little uh, play area over here. And then when you're ready to um, you know save it you just click save scan the log file and it'll create a big excel file for you which is very useful so i you don't necessarily have to use this program there's other ones like freescan um data master you can actually even do data logging in tuner pro although i'm not too crazy about the interface i think it's a little jacked but um but yeah uh that's pretty much it um that should be enough to get you started and uh, stay tuned for more videos about uh, some more in-depth tuning. Thanks.